Hello, I'm Dr Judith Ford and excuse the slightly weird lighting, the sun's reflecting across of, of a picture. Um, I may have to keep moving slowly as the sun moves around. I'm a retired radiation oncologist and palliative care doctor and this talk is just to give a few of the where we say more mysterious things about end of life. We're going to start with something quite practical though. People will say that they're afraid of dying. But what is it they're afraid of? And the answer with that is that it's different for every person. I had a patient who said to me once that she was afraid of dying and I said, what are you afraid of? And she said, I only get to do it once and I want to do it right. So I took her in my arms and said, don't worry, it comes naturally, which it does. It is a natural process. We are just better now than maybe we have been in the past at making it a comfortable progress. So what else do people, or are they afraid of? Some people think it's obvious, it's pain, and people shouldn't die in pain, but it's a practical fear and one that doctors should be able to alleviate. <laughs> the sun's really playing funny tricks, sorry. The second one thing is um, fear of the unknown, just the process, what happens. It's kind of like the how do I do it right? But it is a fear of the unknown and that can go deeper. There can be a fear of the unknown behind death. And there are people who are terrified that they're going to hell. I've heard people say that. So there are fears of the process, fears of what's behind, fears of pain, fears of indignity, fears of losing control, of fears of not being your own self. And so if somebody says they're afraid of dying, don't say yes, of course, we understand. You don't, unless you know a lot more about what they are in practice afraid of. Certainly loss of control can be something that people find very hard. They also get very picky. So my own father had a brain tumour and um, he was bedbound. And he couldn't control very much in his life, even if he, he had the remote control for the TV, but he'd get it mixed up with uh, the call button to get my mum or I to help him. And you'd suddenly hear the TV going terribly loud and it would be because he'd be uh, thinking it was the call button. But, oh, excuse me, this is Sir Toby, my cat. Um, yeah, he obviously thinks it's tea time. Uh, they're pretty controlling too. Um, anyway, my father, if you brought him his tray with his food on without his salt and pepper, which he'd been reverting to his French and was calling condiments, he would say, where are my condiments? And so he'd have to go and get his salt and pepper. And he'd then very seriously salt and pepper the tray and eat his food with great pleasure. But that was a control thing. And so if you are caring for or living with somebody who is ill in some way or suffering in some way and losing their ability to, say, drive, which is a big one, don't be surprised if they get picky about smaller things. It can be really irritating, but remember, giving them as much control as possible over their life is really important. What I really wanted to talk to talk about is the things around last hours. Now, it's almost impossible to say when somebody's going to die, even in the last 24 hours. I would say to people, um, you know, I think they're going to pass tonight, but there's probably a 50% chance they'll sit up and ask for breakfast in the morning. And indeed, I said that to one woman, and in the morning she said another thing that I've said to people that sometimes important is that you need to give permission you need to say it's okay to go if you're ready and you know even if people are unconscious that's just need to say we'll be all right 
because people who are dying sometimes are hanging on for the people around them. And anyway, she said this to her husband in the morning and he looked at her and he said, um, can we discuss this after breakfast? Now, he was about the colour of the collar of my fleece here, the nasty shade of blue, but he ate a hearty breakfast and died peacefully in the afternoon. There is no real predicting and people will do it in their own way. This reminds me of a, a patient I had in New Zealand who loved the horse racing and he and the family, we again, we knew he was near the end of his life and the family and he were sitting watching the horse racing on the TV and they suddenly looked round and found he died. We all thought this was wonderful. He died at a point that was good for him. So there's the need to give permission sometimes. Sometimes there's need to give the family permission to let go. So we had one patient where the daughter actually needed to go and talk to her completely unconscious father and say sorry for something and make something right. No idea what it was, but that helped the family let go. But a patient who wasn't dying and the family, well, all at sixes and sevens, it's often families that are the problem. The patients know a lot more about what's happening to them because their body tells them. So I had about an hour and a half family meeting with this family and um, at the end of it they were all on the page and they understood their relative was dying and they were at peace with it and they went back in and they sat around the bed and then they left to go and get a cup of tea in the cafeteria and she died peacefully while they were out of the room and that's really two things one that it needs the family to be at peace and ready to let the person go and secondly, that patients will often die when people they care about are out of the room. And so don't worry if you're not there when your loved one dies. It may be easier for them to make that step on their own because it is one you only make on your own. And uh, the most dramatic example I had of this was a girl in, I think, her late 20s was dying and was very, very close to her father. She was dying at home with her father and her brother looking after her. They were both in the room. And then the father went out for a wee. Now, it doesn't take a man very long to do that. And she died while he was out of the room. And he wouldn't have gone if he thought she was about to die. But I think they were so close she couldn't die with him there holding on. Is this scientific? Not exactly, but these things are real and it's important that people don't feel bad about it. My mother started dying, went into last breaths whilst we were in the room, but not paying her any attention because my nephew, who was two at the time, was trying to feed me an imaginary biscuit and all our attention was on that and that let her go and that's okay. So the giving permission, the not worrying if you're not there, the being at peace with it yourself, these are all important things. And um, I suppose this is the partner to the make the last six months, the best six months video that I've done. And this is that the last hours and the last days be peaceful and full of acceptance on all sides and free from fear and uh, I think that's probably all I have to say even though I know I'll think of something after but stay well everybody <laughs>